I believe in you. And I believe there's three reasons you probably shouldn't use Obsidian. To hedge, this is my opinion, this is my experience on why I don't use Obsidian, and how that might relate to you, because we're all people. You know, people are people, so why should it be you and I should get along so awfully, as a philosopher once said. Wait, wasn't that Depeche Mode? First and foremost, I'm just gonna say it, it's too advanced for many people's use cases. So why am I saying this? Yes, you can just use it as like a basic, like go over here and just take some notes and have like multiple folders or whatever and and whatnot. But if you, if you wanna really use an app to its fullest capabilities, I'm not really sure whether like limiting it to like the one thing. I mean, I don't really know a lot about how this app works. I won't claim to be the most advanced user of it. And it's because like the learning curve is there. If you wanna get good at Obsidian, just like any other app, it's got a decent learning curve. And I think for some people, we just gotta admit to ourselves like, if it's not intuitive to learn, like it wasn't for me, whereas most apps are pretty intuitive for me to learn, I'm just not gonna use it. So if you're finding it difficult to really learn the application, I'm not gonna say just like quit, but give it an honest effort. And then if you're finding other things to be more intuitive, give that a try. That's something that often gets overlooked. It's like, none of these apps are actually the perfect app. It's just a matter of what, what, what your preference is. And if you're able to use an app consistently and has an organized system within it, you're gonna be the most productive version of you out there. It's not about the app, it's about the systemization and how often often you're able to stay in an ecosystem that is productive. Environment is very important for building habits and, and the apps we use, in my opinion, are a part of that environment. Shout out James Clear, Atomic Habits, convincing me that's the case. All right, once again, I'm just gonna say it. So if I go to Google, right, and we do a little search. Let's do a little search here. Can I use Obsidian on web and sync devices? Obsidian Sync keeps your vaults in sync on multiple devices, including our mobile app. Okay, buy now $10 per month. Oh, so I get it. You have to pay for it to sync between devices. Now, we'll say it's an amazing application and it has like a million add-ons and, and you know, the open sourceness and it, it can be free. Either. But, uh... You have to pay for the online features. To me, I don't get it in this sense. I'm one of those people that think not having offline work in Notion doesn't really matter because I always have an internet connection. So if you're like me who always has an internet connection and isn't that annoyed by the slight delay of like, oh, it's got to load. I don't think you need to care as much about the community's complaints on that front because the other side of the coin is true as well. If you want to have it sync across multiple platforms and you don't want to pay the $10 a month, that's a thought. Like it's totally okay if you're in my boat or in the other boat. It's just a matter of you may have a preference that isn't in line with like everyone's complaint about Notion, i.e. me and others that I know. I know my buddy Chance doesn't care. There's like a lot of people that don't care, but online productivity app community definitely cares about the offline thing. However, it's just a point saying if you don't care about the lack of offline in Notion and you actually care more about the online like me, I would definitely be questioning why it's not a part of you know a cheaper price. I don't think $10 a month is very expensive. I've had other videos explaining why I would pay for it if it made sense, but just a thought. Maybe it's just me, but a reason you might not want to use Obsidian is because it's not intuitive to write things without like slash commands and markdown. And if you want to, I mean, with markdown, it's not intuitive, you know, like doing this even for me is like, I, it just doesn't, I don't know what it is. It's just not very intuitive for me. And that's kind of an issue. You know, if I make a new note here, I start typing things out like, yep, I'm able to do markdown sort of, but no, that's not exactly what it is. It's something different and that's totally fine. I mean, maybe it's, uh, I'm just stupid. Don't get me wrong. I, I can totally be dumb right now um, and not get what I'm saying. I just don't. For some reason to me, it's not intuitive and the interface is also not that aesthetic and you need to add add-ons within it to make it happen. Now, sometimes you really like that customization. I played World of Warcraft a lot when I was younger and like having the ability to like add calendar add-ons and all that kind of stuff it was really fun to me. But when it comes to a productivity app, I kind of just want it to have the functionality and then I tweak it and then maybe add some like automations. To me, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel fun. And if that's you, that's okay. That's the whole point of this video. It's like, Obsidian, great power, great responsibility sort of thing. If you wanna have a really wonderful note-taking application, get Obsidian Sync and really be more organized than I probably am, go ahead. But for some of us, it's okay to admit that it's a little bit over our heads, the learning curve wise, and we don't wanna make the effort uh, because we have something else that's working very well. But play with it and have fun with it. Just like you might have fun checking out this video on how to improve your productivity even more.